Well, that's a, that's a tough act to follow, isn't it? Good morning, uh, actually good afternoon. I am thrilled to be here uh, among each of you. I love this time of year. I love this particular experience that, that happens each fall, uh, a week, week and a half before the students come back. I think it's so important that we gather here together uh, to be instructed, to be uplifted, to be energized as we prepare for the important work that lies ahead. And I can't think of a better way of framing and contextualizing what I've been asked to speak about as it relates to scholarship than for Laurie to have spoken about character. First of all, because she personifies the subject uh, for which she spoke. And second, because uh, I believe part of the most fundamental differentiation of what we do and, and why what we do matters so much is the context within which we pursue scholarship, the character-based curriculum uh, that our organization teaches and pursues and espouses that leads to uh, a sense of personal uh, self-government and freedom. So the, the context where we sandwich a discussion about scholarship on the one hand with a discussion of character and on the other hand with a discussion of liberty I think is exactly the right way to approach this topic. I am, um, I thought about a, a couple of examples to share and then some updates that I'm excited to, to reinforce uh, from a board perspective that I feel uh, our board is very excited about the continuous improvement that the administration and the faculty are focused on on developing and implementing with regards to scholarship. Um, but I think the context is so important that, that perhaps two examples will help us as we think about this important topic. So the first example is one from the Old Testament. So uh, many of us may be studying the, the Old Testament in church right now. Um, and I have the wonderful opportunity to try to help facilitate uh, gospel doctrine type discussions. And in our congregation, we have been studying Hezekiah recently and Josiah, kings in the Old Testament that uh, I believe exhibit this, this contextualized scholarship that I think is so important. One story in particular illustrates this point to me. So Hezekiah, as a young king, faced a series of choices. Uh, he first had to personally decide what, what kind of character and what kind of values and principles he was going to follow. He came from a family uh, that did not espouse uh, lasting principles consistent with uh, consistent with the teachings uh, embedded in the Old Testament. But he made a choice to follow those timeless principles, those eternal truths, and he became a man of character. And that not only influenced his own life, but it influenced the entire kingdom uh, over which he reigned. And early in his reign, uh, the Assyrians came to attack. And he faced a crisis that he had to, he had, he had to, to respond to. And the combination of, of character, scholarship, uh, in, in the defense of liberty, to me, was a tremendous example. So uh, in the Old Testament, in the book of Second Chronicles, it, it discusses the way he first reached out to the Lord for help. He prayed. He reached out to, to his uh, spiritual leaders, among whom was Isaiah the prophet. And they prayed together for God's help. And then they went to work, uh, and they worked very hard on the preparation of how they were going to defend themselves. And, and one of the projects that they took on was uh, the, the tunnel that is now famous uh, for millennia now, Hezekiah's Tunnel. And they dug so as to divert the water from outside the city walls to inside the city walls. So the Assyrians could not access that waterway. And the people inside the walls would be protected and have access to this water. 
it was an engineering feat uh, for the ages. Uh, they started on two ends of this 1,770 foot tunnel that they needed to, to dig through, through solid stone. Uh, and two teams worked very carefully. Think of the engineering prowess required to then end uh, within three feet of one another. So the math, the science, the scholarly uh, excellence that was required, and the hard work, the diligence required to, to then have this experience that was chronicled and, and inscripted on part of the tunnel close to where the, the two sides met, was this description of uh, those with picks and shovels hearing one another with their ears because they were so close to one another and using the sound of one another's voice to, to bridge that final three feet and complete this incredibly uh, rigorous and excellent project that, that required scholarship but also required great faith and character. And that, among uh, a host of other things, enabled the kingdom to be protected and enabled Hezekiah to be a successful leader. Those are the kinds of leaders that we hope to develop and uh, hope to teach uh, the principles of true scholarship, but within the right context, within the context of, of timeless principles. The second example I wanted to share, uh, I just recently received as an update from, from one of our children. So we have uh, all four of our children have been at American Heritage School for a number of years now. Our oldest two have graduated uh, and are both now serving full-time missions, one in Brazil, one in Montreal. Our son in, in Brazil had an interesting experience that, again, to me, is another good example of the importance of pursuing scholarship, but always within the right context, the context of character, uh, and, the, and the context of enlightened self-government, uh, a willingness to choose uh, the path that, that we pursue. So he was, he's about 13 months into his mission. He was having an incredible experience, teaching many people with great success. Uh, and then, out of the blue, his area got shut down. And, and he and his companion both were moved to different areas. Uh, and, and the week prior, they had baptized two families, two full families, and now neither missionary was going to be there to help them uh, become integrated into their local congregation. It made no intellectual sense uh, to, to my son. And he really struggled, and, and he was transferred to this, uh, this new area, uh, he and his, and his new companion, where he had he had really no context or, or understanding, and yet, uh, even though with his mind and his faculties he could not understand what had happened, he fell back on principles. He fell back on on characteristics that he had learned here, among other places, that uh, included humility as an example. That that I don't understand all of the context, but I believe in God and I believe that he understands that context. And as a result, I am willing to move forward with faith. So now he's been in this new area for just a couple of weeks. This is the area that he's in. And he, um, he and his companion are walking down the street and he sees this young boy and feels impressed to go speak with him uh, and in fact, he reminds him of an investigator in a prior area many months ago that he had, that he had taught. His, his mother, uh, he believed there was a connection. And so he was impressed to approach this young man. And instead of a normal introduction, the first words out of his mouth are, is your mother's name Sarah? Seems a little strange, right? Um, and the young man looks startled and says, yes, she is. Um, and we live one street down now. We, we moved a few months ago. And they just taught and baptized that whole family. 
And, and he has had a, a second experience where a young man he had met a year ago in a totally different area of the mission had happened to be on the same street in this new area, and he remembered him and baptized him um, yesterday. And so that, um, that to me is a powerful second example of uh, the reason why the context of pursuing great scholarship, pursuing excellence in our scholarship, truly matters within the right context. That, that if we are to, to educate and help develop a generation of incredible leaders, they're going to need both excellence as it relates to their scholarship, but also that excellence that is informed by their character, their willingness when scholarship is not enough, and, and their understanding uh, using their faculties is not quite enough, that there will be a bridge there for now, that their character and the principles that they have been taught and that they know on their own are true, will guide them to continue to make good decisions. Um, and I, I, feel so, I feel so fortunate to be associated with an institution that keeps scholarship in this correct context. And I believe it, it is why this institution is so special and, and like no other of which I am familiar. So I wanted to share a couple of updates, again, from a, from a board perspective, just to emphasize how supportive we are as a board, how excited we are to see these, uh, these additions to uh, the continued focus, which we support, of scholarship in the right context. So first of all, we're, we're thrilled with the announcement of a, a new director of curriculum and instruction, uh, which we think uh, will be a great support to all of our teachers and help us uh, ensure that our curriculum continuously uh, is improving and our instruction uh, methods are also uh, always improving and that we are always focused on what we can do uh, to continuously improve. We're also uh, excited about the independent consultation in curriculum design, delivery, and classroom management. Again, as another support to the, the outstanding work that is already underway. Um, but, but a support that we feel is very important for us to, to add uh, to enable the kind of scholarship that will, will uh, allow us to succeed in our mission. And then finally, uh, school-wide focus on project-based learning, uh, and especially service learning. Here again, uh, getting right to the heart of this contextualized scholarship. It's not scholarship as an end on its own but rather scholarship as a means to uh, a, a more full end that, uh, that goes back to the mission of this institution, that uh, we want to be useful uh, in the hands of the Lord and bring incredible gifts and talents, but also character uh, in the service of others. So I want to, um, I want to conclude this section again with uh, a communication of support for our administration, support for all of our faculty, love for our faculty and our administration, and appreciation for those new parents here in the room that have made the decision to come to American Heritage School. Our family made that decision many years ago, and I count it among a very short list of the most positive, impactful decisions uh, that has blessed our family so significantly. So thank you for being here and thank you for your attention. <laughs>